welcome to the second part of the energy market and finance session in this eighth Athens Energy Dialogues conference. Uh, I have the honor and the pleasure to coordinate the discussion among highly regarded professionals in the lending side uh, on green investments. And we, we are going to discuss how we safeguard green investments, what do we uh, how do we know that uh, a, a green investment a green investment is really green so may i present to you our panel today and i'll start in order of appearance by john singer he's an energy economist at the european investment bank and he's uh, assessing the viability and sustainability of projects uh, of energy value in eib's financing um, Dimitris Koufos, he's the head of Thai Finance Unit, Associate Director within the Energy Efficiency and Climate Change of uh, uh, the EBRD. Uh, Adiro Aji Banila, she's uh, head of Structured Financing, Corporate and Investments Banking with National Bank of Greece. Spiros Venetianos, he's the de Deputy General Manager and Head of Structured Finance Group Corporate and Investment Banking in Eurobank. And last but not least, Kostandinos Petropoulos Dinos, General Manager, Head of Shipping and Structured Finance in Perius Bank. And uh, uh, a welcome to you all. And I believe that you are the most qualified and the most competent to discuss today's subject uh, in, in uh, identifying what is sustainable financing and what investments are and how do we qualify the investments. So over the last years, there's been a huge discussion about uh, the new EU energy policies, green investments and sustainable financing. And this has become a pillar of EU integration. And over the last two years, we have seen a lot uh, of EU initiatives into those sectors. And so I would like to start with you, John, uh, as you, as uh, over the last two years, you were a member of the technical experts panel and you have been involved in the development of the EU taxonomy on sustainable financing. So may I kindly ask you to present uh, the, the main, uh, let's say, scope and the, the, the benefits um, of uh, this initiative, this EU initiative um, in, the, in creating a framework for sustainable financing and safeguarding green investments um, throughout uh, Europe. And how do you view EIB, EIB support and contribution in this policy? Thank you very much. And uh, it is indeed an honor to be part, uh, part of this discussion today. Uh, thank you for inviting me. So at the European Investment Bank, we've been doing climate finance or green finance for quite a few years. We were one of the largest green bond uh, issuers in, globally at the moment. And so we have quite a lot of experience and other people are doing trying to do the same. There is a strong appetite for green financing products, for money that has been invested ethically or in environmentally friendly or sustainable ways. And in a way, that's the EU taxonomy is trying to address this appetite. So this doesn't come out of nowhere. It isn't something that comes top down, but it's trying to create a framework uh, based on a common set of uh, agreed principle and scientific criteria on, on, on saying what does an investment or an activity need to do in order to be counted as green and the taxonomy basically took a view that okay we've had they've identified six uh, critical pillars uh, the first and the, the one with of the most advanced at the moment is uh, the activities that relate to climate change mitigation to climate change issues in particular a second pillar dealing with climate change adaptation so increasing resilience to the uh, impact of climate change uh, and then for four more pillars which are currently in the uh, in the process of being drafted uh, regarding the water and marine resources circular economy 
uh, biodiversity and um, pollution uh, pollution reduction. So the, the core principle of the EU taxonomy is for an, an activity to be counted as sustainable, it needs to make a substantial effort in one of these six pillars. Right now, what the taxonomy has done, it has defined uh, criteria for activities that either substantially contribute to climate change mitigation or adaptation. Then furthermore, there is a requirement that activities must do no significant harm to any of the other pillars. So to give you a concrete example, in the energy sector, nuclear power, although it does make substantial contributions to climate change mitigation, it also has significant negative effects on the environment and pollution, and therefore is not generally counted as a sustainable activity. And that's the core principle of, of where we're at. And uh, it's certainly, it, it was, it sounds simple in principle, but in practice, when we worked on these criteria, obviously going through all the different types of activities, even in energy alone, there are a lot of energy activities and trying to come up with coherent criteria to define this is far, um, is, is not necessarily always straightforward. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how we're going to implement this in practice. Thank you. And uh, Dimitri, uh, uh, EPRD, I think EPRD's view uh, is more global, more relaxed than EIP's. Um, how does EBRD perceive the notion of green projects when uh, choosing to finance or support or invest? Um, and how do you see EBRD's role in supporting the green initiative? Thank you very much, Christina, for the warm introduction, first of all. And a uh, warm welcome to the other panelists, uh, the distinguished guests here. And uh, I do hope that we will provide the insights that the audience were looking for into contributing to the a more sustainable financing future. Um, for the EBRD, the EBRD does truly have a much larger global mandate than, than the EIB in terms of uh, areas that, that we focus on that do not cover the EU uh, taxonomy, for example, mining. And therefore, as our mandate has evolved over the years from a market transition uh, institution for, following the fall of the Soviet Union in the early 90s, we've, we've articulated last year in July 2020 a strategy, a mandate that will lead us to become what we be, what we believe a, a climate oriented institution uh, to transition, to accelerate this transition to a green, low carbon and resilient economy with the overall goal of achieving a net zero carbon world by 2050. Our overall guiding document is the Paris Agreement. And as of that, our main commitments will be green finance ratio will be over 50% of the bank annuals investment by 2025 realized in an uh, over 25 million tons of GHG emissions reductions by 2025. This will be accomplished, taking into account all those necessary uh, frameworks, such as the EU Sustainable Finance Framework and others that are evolving throughout the, <clears throat> throughout the world for us to be able to support that. And on that, we have three pillars that we're working on. The first is our policy engagement. The second is our alignment with these pillars, as I mentioned, the Paris Agreement or others. And the third is, is the thematic areas. On the policy engagement, we try and we'll try and promote the focus on long-term carbon strategies and greening of the financial systems, building capacity and awareness for climate and environmental risk management. On our alignment, Paris Agreement and the EU Sustainable Finance, we will be we will take a decision that by 2022 we will be all our investments will be considered um, Paris aligned or aligned with the relevant taxonomies. We'll screening all our investments accordingly. We will continue to increase capacity to support countries and sectors as they develop the low carbon and climate resilient and environmental friendly strategies. And we'll scale up our efforts to mobilize climate finance while supporting at the same time, a just transition mechanism. Keep in mind that the EBRD is one of the main recipients of the GCF as, as an accredited institution to deploy climate finance. In terms of key thematic areas, we'll be working on a variety of thematic areas to increase the scale and foster the innovation of environmental and climate finance, such as greening the financial systems, industrial decarbonization, sustainable foods, energy systems integration, cities and environmental infrastructure, sustainable connectivity, green buildings, natural capital. Of course, the work in front of us is one would say daunting because this is the first time at a global scale we've reached some type of common agreement among most of the MDBs on uh, the key principles and methodologies and guidelines that will define 
our contribution towards this sustainable finance action plan. Going forward, we will to continue our work in sectors that are quite challenging, but working with local institutions and governments in all these areas that I've identified. That, as a you know, high-level introduction, I hope gives you a broad understanding of where we will be addressing our focus in the coming years. Thank you, Dimitri. Um, turning over to the commercial banks, uh, I would like to start with uh, RG and Nashmak of Greece. Um, we had uh, uh, the experience of the first green bond issuance, a successful issuance by NDG. And um, may I ask you, RG, to, uh, to tell us your experience, um, the appetite of the investors and how this appetite for green investment has changed, if it has changed, NDG's strategy uh, towards uh, green projects and energy projects uh, within the market. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Christina. Thank you for the very warm introduction. And of course, it's a pleasure to be amongst you all on today's panel. Uh, indeed, and last year, NBG successfully completed a 500 million uh, six-year non-call five senior green, green bond issuance at a very competitive coupon of 2.75%. Uh, percent. Uh, the issuance received very uh, strong subscription by both the local and the international investors community. As you highlighted, and for the record, that was the first ever green bond issued by a Greek systemic bank and also the first benchmark transaction for Greece's capital markets since the outburst of the pandemic. Funds will be used to finance and refinance projects, green projects of the energy sector. Uh, judging by this experience and the overall uh, demand uh, subscribed uh, to our issuance, uh, we can safely argue two things. First of all, uh, there is strong investors' uh, confidence to NBG's uh, brand name as a go-to local bank for energy initiatives in Greece. And secondly, judging by the rate of subscription to our, to our issuance, we can definitely say that they safely and perfectly proxied the subscription trends that have been marked on a European and a global uh, level for green bonds. Uh, it is indicative that for 2020, uh, and as uh, I think John also highlighted before, uh, the, the green bonds constituted more than 50% of the European and the global ECG labeled uh, investments and issuances. So there is no doubt that green economy has evolved as a key uh, as a key driver for value creation, both for investors and for, for sponsors. And we anticipate that this uh, trend shall continue for the years to come as we are progressing uh, to ECG integration. Uh, Strategy-wise, and, and for MBG, of course, the contemplated bond issuance was uh, a diversification of our funding sources in support of our credit expansion in, in green economy. As a bank, we continue to maintain a leading 40% stake in renewable financings. We are actively exploring the new financing regime on corporate PPAs and the target model. We have anchored systemically important financing transactions uh, that kind of defined uh, the, the, the green energy sector of Greece uh, towards decarbonization, delimitization in line with the EU green targets. And we have also carried, and we continue to have a very strong pipeline actually uh, uh, on uh, in relation to, to energy privatizations, mostly in terms of energy networks expansion uh, and upgrade. Uh, as uh, uh, actually we have communicated at multiple occasions and across corporate levels in the past, we continue to have a very strong credit appetite to expand our credit portfolio in, in green uh, energy investments. We have a, a, a committed uh, plan to employ uh, 3 billion euros of liquidity in the course of the next three years. And that goes across the clusters, the client clusters of wholesale, SME and retail uh, customers. Uh, of course, and as a closing remark, and for this to, to happen, one of the big contingencies is uh, regulation 
and legislation, uh, which has to be developed in a manner that is concrete, so to make both bond and loan capital markets a sustainable funding source for sponsors to pursue their green growth initiatives, as well as for credit lenders and credit investors uh, to, uh, you know, assume and uh, safely navigate uh, through the associated investment races. Thank you, Adi. I'm turning back, uh, turning to Spiros now. Um, Spiro, uh, I mean, we are a small market, but with a large potential. Uh, EU taxonomy uh, sets, uh, puts a set of rules which is not very easy to deal with, uh, especially in markets which I may say we are not very so sophisticated, we're not there yet. How do, you see, <laughs> how do you feel that the EU taxonomy and the EU initiatives will affect how Greek banks approach green investments and green projects? And do you feel that Eurobank and the other commercial banks, the other uh, Greek banks, have a role in taking the challenge and um, um, allowing even small investments to become uh, a reality? Do you think there is an impact there? And was it positive? Is it negative? Christina. Thanks a lot for, for this very interesting question and uh, thank you for having me here with this uh, distinguished panel. Uh, actually, um, not everything is as, as different as it looks. Of course, um, from your question, I understand your concerns or, or how the clients will firstly react to such requirements. but they will understand, they will accommodate, and I can only echo what uh, RG and John said about the demand. The demand is here, and my headline, the headline of my speech would be that this is not a requirement for a better future. This is a commercial necessity for us, because the appetite is there, and we need to develop the products to provide the products. So EU taxonomy, it's absolutely necessary in order for everyone to understand what is really green. There is a huge reputational risk for the banks, which uh, recently have are recovering their name in uh, Greece. Um, not to have uh, green products uh, with uh, not appropriate tags and claims for greenwashing. So everything will be clean and everyone will know about what we speak. Second, what everybody said is that a more sustainable environment, a more stable environment will create more products, will create more appetite, and that will boost uh, the market. Thirdly, uh, this will lead, of course, into a better future because more green products, uh, real green products, will improve climate change, um, the, the effects, of course, and uh, will achieve the environmental and social objectives with additional reputational benefits for the banks. Last but not least, there is also a hidden uh, benefit, and this is linked with risk management. Through the integration of ESG factors into the bank's credit worthiness assessment, I strongly believe that we will do a better and more thorough analysis on credit risks. Of course, uh, as you mentioned, the limitations are there and the challenges are there. First of all, we need internally in the commercial banks how to uh, embed these principles in our own policies and frameworks and try to make it as digestible as possible to our clients who are already complaining a lot about the new KSG requirements, the new MIFID requirements, and I, I can throw a number of abbreviations that uh, the, the clients have to know. 
but this is for good and and they know that they, it's not only necessary but it's uh, something for the future for our children uh, of course this uh, leads to additional needs for uh, training of personnel for hiring external advisors for uh, improving our IT infrastructure and this needs to cost and probably the timeline of the transactions for them to be completed. I however believe that after a few transactions and after fine tuning the processes because uh, I cannot believe that we will uh, set it uh, perfectly in the beginning I believe that this will be part of our processes and uh, it will be extremely smooth. So in Eurobank, as uh, in all other banks, having already uh, accommodated the UNEP FI principles, having um, uh, introduced policies in order to be compliant with IFC and EPRD regulations, have made several steps. Now we are all working in order to make a proper step to have a very specific, clear policy on how to accommodate these new EU sustainability financial principles. Thank you very much. Thank you, Spiro. Um, turning to you, the, you know, um, uh, last but not least, I mean, Pyreus Bank has been supporting all these years small investors and individual green investors, what we call retail, uh, in the retail sector, um, house renovations uh, with green, uh, under green principles, in the future potential electrification, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think that by introducing these new sets, well, new sets, this uh, mandatory, let's say, sets of rules through, through EU taxonomy, it, it will affect the market, will, will it? And when talking about green energy, do you feel that it will um, push to consolidation uh, small investors into large projects? Um, how do you do that? And how do you think Paris Bank will continue its strategy uh, in the future? Yes, well, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers myself for the invitation and you, Christina, for your kind introduction. Going to your question, aside from the corporate clientele, Piraeus Bank has indeed an extensive reach uh, over SMEs, agricultural businesses, retail customers, and has always been uh, very supportive of their green investments with tailor-made products. Supporting green investment is a crucial part of our overall ESG strategy to promote sustainable development and responsible banking. Piraeus Bank had an active role in the formation of the principles for sustainable banking under the finance initiative of the United Nations Environment Programme. This represents a commitment to align the bank's business model, which society's goals and needs become more responsible and strengthen our social contribution. Now, new EU regulations aim at defining what is sustainable investment and help reduce greenwashing. Financial institutions will be expected to identify, respond to, and publicly communicate on environmental and social risks associated with their clients. This inevitably will increase reporting requirements to track and report compliance of corporate activities. Larger companies are usually in best position to collect and disclose the required information compared to mid-sized clients. Having said that, I do not expect that the additional reporting burden of sustainability regulations will be the trigger for consolidation in the green energy market, at least in the near term. Consolidation happens already, but for other reasons. It happens because of the need to achieve economies of scale and be more competitive in other cost elements of green investments. The economic burden of compliance for sustainable financing is not yet at levels that could tilt the scale. On the other hand, this may change in the future. We do expect that going forward, sustainability considerations will become increasingly important for mid-sized companies. ESG objectives are not a trend that will wear out because they relate to vital priorities of our society. 
If anything, environmental legislation is expected to tighten over the coming years. The same time, banks and other capital providers are likely to seek to reduce exposure to environmentally or socially harmful activities. So it is indeed crucial for mid-sized companies to prepare ahead of time and manage the transition phase. No doubt, banks have the responsibility to assist their clients in this process. There is a learning curve for all of us. New regulations are being drafted, terminology is being clarified, rules are not yet standardized. During this phase, banks can offer guidance, educate the clients, and assist them in adopting a business model in line with sustainability standards. Perios Bank offers today a wide range of lending products for green investments in renewables, energy efficient buildings, transitional electric vehicles, which enjoy preferential pricing. The list will gradually expand to include areas such as investments in the management of water resources, reduction of industrial emissions, smart farming, or other less obvious uh, sectors. Equally important with the extension uh, of the scope for green lending is to start embedding financial incentives in our product offering, which would be made conditional on specific sustainability criteria to be periodically reviewed. This could apply to both large and small customers. Last year, Piraeus Bank pioneered with an extension of an ESG-linked long-term financing to a major Greek corporate for investments in renewables. The pricing of such loan was linked to specific sustainability criteria. The concept is to be extended to other sectors and even smaller clients. Such financial incentives could help clients familiarize themselves with sustainability objectives and gradually develop a culture for sustainable development to be incorporated in their business models. Very much. Um, we have uh, three minutes left. Uh, first of all, thank you all for respecting the time and thank you all for such concise replies uh, in a very short uh, time period allowed to, to each one of you. Um, is there anything you would like to add we have two minutes left. No. Okay. So I guess, thank you again. Uh, looking forward to build together with the financiers a green future for our children. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.